Hello, welcome to Tell Us What You Made, the show where we each make one dish with one common ingredient or theme. And then we get together, compare notes, and see if you learn anything. This episode, Inka, Andrew, and I all made different dishes using potato. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, Alvin. I'm going to go first, so this is what I made. I made crispy roast potatoes with Kenny bacon and a brown butter vinaigrette. So this recipe for context is inspired by a recipe that Inka's brother actually made for a potluck once. It blew me away the first time I had it, and this is my interpretation of what I remember. My brother made it onto about to eat. (laughs) So I'm throwing a lot of these Yukon baby gold potatoes in a pot and just going to boil them until they are fork tender. There was a lot of them. I had two bags. And after that, I just boil them until a knife pierces them. There's no resistance when poked, like me. Anyways... I'm taking these out, letting them cool on a tray. So the water was salted, and as these dry out, the salt, I think, dries out the exterior a Mm. little more, making the skins extra dry and primed for roasting greatness. Look at that steam. That's nice. Did you start the water cold? I did because I am lazy. No, I think that's how you're supposed to. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It, like, raises the temperature of the potato more evenly rather than, like, shocking just the outside. I love how Andrew just knows now. He's made so many potatoes. He just (laughs) knows what is good for the potato. Oh, yeah. Andrew can do all three of our recipes for this video. Yeah, Andrew's potato king. Well, I didn't know that, so I'm glad I did something right. And after that, this is the candied bacon. So this is two entire packs of bacon because I had a lot of potatoes. I love bacon. I I love cooking it. Yeah, all this beautiful, delicious bacon fat. Rendering fat. It's beautiful. And I'm straining it and saving it over some butter because I think oh. butter and potatoes work. I didn't want to do only bacon fat for these potatoes. And I think you actually need quite a good amount of fat for this wow. recipe. So salt, garlic, butter, and bacon fat into a little Pyrex measuring bowl. Oh boy. Some okay. pepper. Wow. Oof. This is one of those dishes that I do not want to see being made because I know how yeah. good it's going to be. But like yeah. once you see the aluminum. That, that was a shocking yeah. visual. I don't think I've Woo! seen that ever captured on no. film before. That's what Just they a, don't show you. A, st- a stick of butter in a cup with bacon fat being mm-hmm. poured on top. This is why food tastes good. Oh it's true. Goodness. To candy them, adding brown sugar. Uh, yeah. My dark brown sugar was very hard. So I pounded the crap out of it until it gets nice bubbly. And a little bit of water just to deglaze and bring everything together so it's nice mm. and sticky and just beautiful and delicious. Ooh. I love this. I love making candied bacon. It's one of the best things in the world. The candied bacon was my suggestion, so... Oh, is it? Oh, <laughs> wow. Thank you, Inka, for adding that to the recipe. I didn't know it was you. <laughs> yeah. I could eat this straight up like this. Yeah. Oh. What we don't see is me eating approximately one third of this <laughs> as I was preparing everything else. That should be included in recipe amounts. Yes. It's like yeah. two packs of bacon, yeah. parentheses, you will eat 30% one. <laughs> Don't yeah. worry. Yeah, so now the potatoes are a little more cool to the touch. The skin is dried out a little bit. I'm using the same measuring cup with all the goodness to sort of crush and smash these potatoes into these round discs. Gosh, the visual is super cool. But also, like, if I was doing this, I would totally spill the fat in Yeah, the cup. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I just was like, I need something heavy to press these potatoes. We have a cup filled with what it's going to be. I thought it was pretty efficient, so good job, Alvin. Now, just drizzling this beautiful liquid gold all over these potatoes, giving it a oh nice coat, because this is enough for both sides. And I'm roasting them in an oven, 400 to 425, really hot for quite a long time. And well, you know, on the terms of uh, more butter, I'm making brown butter. One of my favorite things in the world, just because I had this brown butter vinaigrette at a restaurant that I loved, and I wanted to try to make something similar. Also because I couldn't find the recipe that Inka's brother used. Into another measuring cup goes some brown butter, some nice mm-hmm. Dijon mustard, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. some lemon juice for that acidity. I thought lemon and butter really works well. Potatoes, mm-hmm. some salt, <laughs> some pepper, and some sage. I like sage. I think sage and brown butter is a combination. So well. Oh yeah, incredible. Definitely. Classic. I can- this smells, this probably smelled so good. Insane. I was like, oh my God. And I, after you immersion blend it, all the aromatics start to come out. Ooh. Everything is becoming, every, the whole yeah. kitchen smells insane. And this, like the potatoes are ready. And they just like came out of the oven. They're just sizzling and beautiful. Bubbling. Um, Ooh. Yeah. And then it's time to flip. This is one of my favorite parts about this. Oh, so yes. You can see. Yes. yes. That is a crust. So the other side also gets some time to sear. 
and they go back in. And after that's all done, the whole process, I think I roasted it for over an hour. I think it just takes a lot of time to get that crust, right. that glass, like that, you know, when you scrape your fork across it, you know, you can hear the little ka-ting, ka-ting. Yeah. That's not the, the sound it makes. <laughs> yeah. The, the, ch -ch 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 I'm not yeah, good yeah. at this. Oh, it's crispy. I can tell it's crispy. Yeah. Well, one second. Keep rolling. I want to check what's, who's at the door. If a potato comes through the door, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> oh, my package is here. Yes. What were we talking about? You're about to do some brushing. Uh, yes. This dressing is kind of drizzled everywhere mm -hmm. over these big plate of potatoes. It's almost like a plated dish because now the candy bacon has to be sprinkled on top. Sprinkled on top. And I chopped some chives on the side for that nice oniony chive flavor and color. I think they go well with potatoes, and there you have it. These are wow. crispy wow. smashed potatoes with candy bacon, brown butter vinaigrette. That looks Dang. crazy. That's This is like the kind of stuff that you know will be a hit at like a potluck. Oh, you know? yeah. Mm. This is all anybody wants to eat. It's so shiny and crispy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know I love it. It's like all of the garnishes of a salad, but without the rest of the salad. I believe, Inca, you're up next. Tell us what I you made have... with potatoes. Okay. Well, I made a sweet potato latte. Ooh. Welcome what? to Inca's Cafe. <laughs> potato coffee? Okay, no coffee. It's like, latte is just milk, right? So it's like a sweet potato oh. milk drink. Uh, but you could. You could mm. add a shot of espresso, and I, sh and I thought about it, but then I was like, okay, that's a little too crazy. <laughs> so, um, but I think it would be good. Sweet potato is a fairly common ingredient, I think, in like Taiwan, Korea, um, for like different desserts and like drinks. So this is inspired by that. I've had it once. Well, I have it a few times before. There's this place in New York called Take 31. They do a sweet potato makgeolli. It's like a sweet mm. potato rice wine thing that's really good. Love sweet potato. So hopefully you guys will like this too. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Okay, starting off with some really nice sweet potatoes. I like these because they're... I like the sweetness they have, and I also like the color it gives. It's a little more like on the yellower side as opposed to orange. So I'm just giving them a good rinse. I don't know why I shot this. I think I just wanted to show that I cleaned them, um, <laughs> dried them, and then I peeled them. <laughs> this is just me prepping my sweet potatoes. And then I just cut them up into like, you know, bite-sized pieces kind of just like chunky pieces, didn't really matter because basically what I'm doing is just preparing them to steam. Mm. And I just steam them in my rice cooker because that's literally the easiest way to do it. I just have to close the lid, move to the steam function and boom. Look at it, steamed potatoes, mm. which is something I think at our house we eat a lot of. We just eat steamed sweet potatoes. And so basically once it's soft enough for your chopstick or your stick to push through, mm. You're good. In my blender, I just throw in my potatoes, which are now really soft. And then I just put in some milk. I like to use whole milk. And then this is just a splash of maple syrup for sweetness. Again, I'm not going too crazy on it. Um, I know some people like using brown sugar or sugar. I just wanted to use maple syrup because I feel like it goes well with a uh, sweet yeah. potato flavor. Blend that all up again. That was a quite full blender. I just realized I use my blender a lot. <laughs> I just blend everything. Look at that consistency. You can see how it's like Ooh. thicker it's now. Very thick, yeah. Yeah, it's like, like luscious. Kind of, oh, yeah, a little bit frothy. And then I just cooked it again over the the heat, kind of like reheating it almost. That's basically what I'm doing. Also, if I needed to add any more sugar and things like that, this is where I taste tested it. And that's it. It's done. Whoa. Um, this is sweet potato latte. I really like it. It's like really rich and creamy and I filled it up almost all the way. Then I topped it off with some hot milk foam. How does the flavor of the sweet potato come through? It's really there. Like you, it really does taste like, um, think of like, yeah, like steamed sweet potato. Mm. You really do get that flavor there, but it's, you know, but it's mellowed out a little bit by the milk. Also like just for toppings, I added in on like a sprinkle of cinnamon. Again, goes well with it and to topped it off with some more nuts. I think there was like pistachio, al almond, and maybe like mm. cashews. I feel like you could also do this with yams or orange, the ones that, you know, a lot of people watching yeah. might be used to, and it would taste amazing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if I swapped it for like ube, like purple sweet potato, 
They've become an ube latte. I mean, maybe not like potato though. I don't know. I don't think you want to try it with like actual potato, like you know, like <laughs> Yukon potatoes. But like all other sweet potatoes. That's just called soup. <laughs> it's super easy to do. It's like such a great. I mean, now is like summer. I get it, spring summer. But like for winter, it's such a good drink. It's like hot chocolate, right? It's like richer,、mm. creamier.、Mm. Andrew, have you tried this before? No, I've never had anything like this. We gotta make sure you try one. I'm curious what you would think, but it, it's really good. It works. It sounds good. I mean, I, I I like when savory ingredients are made into sweet things. You know,、mm. bringing over、mm-hmm. some of that earthy quality of potato,、yes. perhaps. I don't know. I'm imagining it, and it tastes great in my imagination. Sweet potato recipe. Hey, that was good. That was good. I got、Wait. that. That was. I、good. missed that one. That went right over my head. What just happened? What、A、just、plus. happened? A plus. Somebody. We'll just have to watch the video. <laughs> that was my recipe. Next up is our potato king, Andrew, who has been on his potato journey for a while. Tell us what you made this time, Andrew. Previously on the channel, I made the video where I cooked through 25 pounds of potatoes and. Tried a lot of recipes for the first time and had a lot of fun making potatoes. So, for my potato recipe, I picked a dish that de-emphasized the potato a little bit, and I made a smashed chicken breast with a potato crust and arugula salad.、Ooh. And this comes from the chef Francis Molman. I am so excited. Okay, so for this recipe, you are asked to use a skin-on piece of chicken breast. And normally at the grocery store, if you're buying a breast on its own, it's either boneless, skinless, or it's bone-in, skin-on. So I bought that one and then just removed the bone here, as you can see I'm doing.、Mm. You might have seen my cat's head in the edge of frame there. He was not on the table. I'm I'm on this elevated cart, and the kitchen table's next to it. So he was sitting on that, watching me. He was very curious what I was doing.、Dang、so yeah,、goodness. I took the bone out. I cleaned up some of the,、uh, you know, there's like a little tendon that's inside the tender of the breast. So I was cleaning that up. I then took a sheet of wax paper to protect. <laughs> the chicken from my cast iron, which I used as a mallet. I don't own a,、uh, you know, like one of those meat hammer things.、Yeah. But the cast iron is good because it's a lot of surface area. You can really smush it down. And you're doing this so that the, you know, cooking will be a little bit more even throughout the breast because usually it's kind of like a elongated teardrop shape. You know, it's fatter at one end, skinnier at the other. So you're evening it out for more even cooking. So here's the potato, the star of the video. What kind of potato is it? This is a russet potato.、Okay. One russet potato. I like how we all use different kinds of potatoes. I also showed off my peeler. You know, there's there's the peelers where it's kind of like a knife handle, and then the peeler is at the end. I feel like the one where the blade is perpendicular to the handle is so much easier to use. So here I got my mandolin,、Ooh. and I think I'm dialing in the thickness. Do a couple、Ooh. test slices there. The recipe asks for paper thin slices、mm. of potato. So after a couple attempts, I get to a thickness that I like, and then I jam、Ooh. on through the potato. And Whoa, there I got my stacks. You, you, that was I, so brave. I you got to like <laughs> so tiny. I don't know how you. I, I, I'm going I'm quite slow at the end of the potato oh, there. Oh, and you can see I'm kind、some. of like. I got a little claw hand, and I'm just gripping it by the very tip. I'm sure one day I'll cut myself and then never do it like that again. <laughs> so here's the smashed breast. It's seasoned with salt and pepper and some red pepper flake, and、Ooh. then you start、mm. layering this potato on, overlapping.、Yeah. I'm just kind of mimicking how a fish looks. I, th- I yeah. suppose. Yeah. I was gonna say yeah. So the recipe also suggests using the bottom of a separatable tart pan as your flipping device. I、mm. thought that I was going to flip it over like this. Unfortunately, the potato stuck to it, and it was a disaster. Oh no! <laughs> so instead, I just put the parchment back on the top because you know later on when I go outside, I need to flip the thing over. So I have this、yeah. outdoor space where I have this grill、Ooh. and.、Uh, Here's some smoke coming out. Here's how I start my charcoal. It's one of these electric loop things. That's the best way to do it. I got some Argent- 
Tinian wine mm. because Francis Mullman is always drinking wine outdoors. So I was mm. like, you know what? I got to feel the moment and do it right. Channeling the energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Here I'm just kind of rearranging the coals and blowing on them to make sure that they're evenly wow. ignited. As you can see, it's a lump charcoal. So it's more natural, getting natural. more of a wood smoke flavor to it. And so that is the cast iron flat top griddle that I got for the purpose of making the cheese crusted burrito. If you remember from that video, mm -hmm. I had to get a larger flat cooking surface. Mm -hmm. So that was also part of the inspiration for doing it this way. I was like, okay, I have this large flat griddle. I can take it outside and now recreate this dish the way that it originally occurs in the, in the cookbook. So now I'm just prepping the salad still outside here. And it's pretty basic. It's just some red onion, some arugula, and some tomatoes. It's dressed very simply with some olive oil and salt. I'm just tossing the arugula with this olive oil. That is butter. I thought it was interesting that the recipe mm. asks you to use butter. The skin of the breast is in my palm and then I peel that parchment off and then I just slap it down on the grill. I cover it while it's doing its initial cook so that some of that smoke from the charcoal can wrap around and impart a little more flavor perhaps. That was my thinking there. And here I am checking out the underside. Mm. And this whole time I was thinking, should I have cut the potatoes a little bit thicker? It was very hard to flip, but I managed to rescue the sheet of potatoes. And nice. so then I just put that on that pie bottom and then put the chicken back on top and then I got it there eventually. Looks good. Once the skin side had, had an opportunity to cook and become crisp, I ended up putting it back on the potato side so that the portions of potato that had slipped out I was able to then get an even brown on all those potatoes. I will say I would have been very confused if I saw somebody making this. I would not have known what it was. Yeah. And so there's the salad on the side and here I am with my chicken breasts and potato jacket. Mm. It ended up being a very mm. simple thing overall. I feel like you could, if you did this with a boneless, skinless chicken breast, the potato almost act, acts like a crispy skin. Right. Enhance that. Mm. Yeah, I, I almost want to take it skinless and then put potato on both sides. Mmm, I see. You know? I've also seen people use potato to protect like a piece of fish mm. in the same way as like a little barrier. Because mm -hmm. that's what it's really doing. It's kind of serving as a barrier between the direct hot, hot heat and the bare meat. But it was good. I know I said I was trying to de-emphasize the potato, but while I was eating it, I was like, I want four times yeah. as many potatoes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Because you know, the the fat renders out of the skin a little bit. It comes into the potato. You have the smoky grill taste as well. And then the salad is just very light and peppery, you know, with like the arugula flavor and, and whatnot. That's, that's something I would eat every day for lunch. I'm curious to know what else would you have done? Like, cause that, just like seeing you try to flip it, like, yeah. you know, how like it was hard. What else would you have done differently that you think would have helped with that? I think the potato should have been a little bit thicker. Uh. The mm. recipe said paper thin, but I think if it was a little bit thicker, I don't know, it was just like a little bit limp as mm. I was flipping it, if that makes sense. I could mm. also imagine that too thick and it's gonna slide around yeah, on, right? on itself. So it's hard yeah. to say. I think it's super creative. Like I like the, I yeah. love the visual of it when you kind of like laid it out, it looked really mm. cool. I just think the concept of wrapping something with that coating is so fascinating to me. Like for example, the first thing you made, like the deboning the chicken, what if you had mm -hmm. wrapped that entire log in potato, you know, like, I just like, like whoa, that would Wellington. be so, Right? Ooh. No, that's what I'm saying. That would be so incredible. Like, I just think there's so many things you could do with this concept. That's really cool. And I would love to see that. I guess now I have to do it. <laughs> now you have to do it. <laughs> yeah, so that was my smashed chicken breast with potato crust. So that was our potato episode. I made crispy smashed potatoes with candy bacon. Inca made her sweet potato latte. And Andrew made a smashed chicken breast with a potato crust and an arugula salad on the side. Tell us what you guys make with potatoes. Leave a comment below about what dish you like to make. And if you guys would like to see more of this series, think about subscribing. All right, bye guys. Bye now. Goodbye. Goodbye.